Hello, welcome to the Family Life Forum. With us today we have Reverend Father Dr. Boniface Kariuki, a priest of the Archdiocese of Nairobi. And we are here with him to discuss the controversial reproductive um, health bill. So Father Karibu Sana, maybe you can further introduce yourself um, for our viewers, our, our viewers to know you better. I am Father Boniface Kariuki, but since I'm in the university, they like referring me at Reverend Dr. Boniface Kariuki, a priest of the Archdiocese of Nairobi and the, chap the Catholic chaplain of the Kenyatta University uh, here at the main campus. I am also a pro-life priest uh, and I'm really concerned about pro-life issues and therefore when uh, you ask that we discuss about uh, this reproductive health bill it is an opportune moment maybe to shed a few light here and there about this document and about other issues that surround uh, life as a priest and as a Christian. Maybe to start you can give us a synopsis um, of, of, of this bill so that our Christians can understand exactly why this bill is contentious. Thank you very much. As a bill, uh, because the, our legislature has to bring up bills of um, things that they won't pass and they discuss them either in, this, uh, in, the, in the Senate uh, and later on in the, in the, in the Parliament. Uh, and they're supposed to, of course, ask people uh, uh, what, they, uh, what, what, what they want to see in the bill. But this uh, bill, uh, it is like it was hurriedly uh, passed uh, to the Senate. Of course, already the second reading we hear has already been done. And therefore, that is why we really are asking why is it being hurried. It is not a new bill because it is labelled the Reproductive Health Bill 2019, sponsored by Honorable uh, uh, Keheka, the Senate for Nakuru County. And in the onset, it is, a, it, is, it, it, is, um, it could be a good bill, but unfortunately it has things that are hiding in there that could really be uh, against life. And that is why, as a Christian and as a priest, um, I feel that it is good that we understand what is behind it. There is more than meets the eye. That is uh, what I would say, that is why it's controversial. Certain things like uh, you find there when they talk about that the people are going to be taught uh, about natural family planning, but they take natural family planning as any other contraceptive. And what is a contraceptive according to the, 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 the anti-lifers or most of the people? It is a method of avoiding pregnancy. But as a Christians, we don't take natural family planning as a, as a way of avoiding pregnancy. It is a way of limiting or spacing children as a family would, uh, would want uh, to do. And that we find uh, very well elaborated in a, a document by uh, a cyclical by Pope Paul VI, a human written in 1968. And therefore, the other things are also when they talk about uh, a partner. You know, when they talk a partner and they say a partner is a person of the opposite sex, it is not defined. Is that person of the opposite sex uh, by choice or is it natural? Because nowadays people are choosing to be either sex. And so it, it needs to be very, very clear because when you talk about marriage, it should be marriage between a man and, and, a, and, a, and a woman. And then when they talk about other things like um, uh, one of the things that it could be, it is very positive in one of the articles there, uh, Article 3b, uh, uh, number one, and says that one of the objectives of this bill is the reduction of maternal morbidity and child morbidity, that there will be the mothers and the children don't have diseases, which is very good. And also they say about child mortality. But when you talk about child mortality, uh, and uh, uh, what is a child? So, and there is something there about uh, it later on in Article 26 about abortion. So, when we say the termination of a pregnancy, that is abortion. Mm -hmm. And is that, is that not mortality of a child? So those are some of the things that we're saying they are, they are, they are contentious uh, uh, in, the, in, that, in, that, in that bill. And then, for example, when they talk about assisted um, reproduction, you know, they talk about things that like IVF, which is in vitro uh, fertilization. And this fertilization takes place outside the 
outside, 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 outside the uterus, yeah? in, vi in, in vitro fertilization in glass, as opposed to in utero when the fertilization takes place in the, in, the, in, the, in the uterus. But for this uh, fertilization to take place in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the glass or in the laboratory, there are many things that are, maybe we we'll talk about it uh, later on. And then another thing that I also find uh, about this bill is that in article number 27, number one, that when one goes to seek um, help for reproductive health and they meet what they call a conscientious objection person who does not really want to be involved in abortion, they are saying that this person, if uh, they refuse to refer the person to um, uh, another practitioner, then they are committing a crime. Why should I be told I'm committing a crime when I want to stand by what I believe in? And th does this not go against my right? And yet the bill talk about rights of the child and rights of the, of the, of the, of the other people. Thank you very much, Father. Maybe can you also elaborate on the name itself, Reproductive Health? Because it's a very heavy loaded name. Yeah, one of the things that uh, we would we'd want to look at it is that in the Constitution of Kenya, Article number 43, number one, it says that every person has a right to health and to the highest form of health, including reproductive health. I do not know why this reproductive health comes in because I am as a person, my health is not um, um, uh, we cannot divide it and say uh, when I talk about my mental health, then my, my, my bodily health, my reproductive health. If you talk about the health of the person, then it could be good. But there is a specific way because reproductive health here involves, therefore, other things that uh, will be brought in like contraceptives, like abortion, you know, like IVF. Uh, other than just saying a person should, uh, we should be talking about health, should the term, the term should be holistic, not just reproductive, reproductive health. So I think that is where the contention is, that it's not just supposed to be about reproductive, there's something hidden there. If you look at many of our clinics, and there are many in our city and many around our city, like this, the, the clinics that are called Maristops. Mm -hmm. They are called reproductive health clinics. But if you really go into those reproductive health clinics, the business that is carried out there is mainly about giving our young people contraceptives and actually procuring abortions. So that reproductive health is a term that is, is hide, uh, hiding so many uh, things in it. Let's go into the part four um, that talks about reproductive health for adolescents. Yes. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit more about that? You know, where they're saying adolescents will, will receive friendly reproductive health services that shall include age-appropriate mentorship and counseling and the likes. Can talk a bit more about that. Number four is good because it, it well it is says one of the duties of the national and county government is to make sure that the youth uh, the, the, the adolescents are given age appropriate uh, reproductive uh, health um, uh, reproductive health yeah and here they defined again from the beginning there in the beginning of the of the the bill number two who is an adolescent an adolescent is anybody who is between 10 years and 18 yes and therefore when they talk about appropriate reproductive health what is appropriate reproductive health for a young person the people who are um, are behind the crafting of this bill they want to see the youth uh, given reproductive health that is not uh, innocent as the word reproductive health means, uh, reproductive health means, because it is going to be also involved with education. And they say education with uh, age appropriate, age appropriate education and, 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 and health. But 
If you look at what they want to introduce as age appropriate education is what in is in what they are trying to introduce in, in uh, education it is comprehensive sexuality education and comprehensive sexuality education it looks quite good isn't it comprehensive sexuality education but unfortunately it is something that is going to teach our children very uh, uh, sexuality in a very uh, implicit, uh, ex explicit way, you know, uh, not hidden, because what they'll be talking about there is sexual reproductive health. And here they are going to be talking about um, uh, reproductive uh, processes, how to use condoms, other forms of contraceptives, including emergency contraception, what we know, we know it is the, what we call the E pills, or postal, postal, postal two, yeah, uh, safe abortion. And safe abortion and you ask yourself is there any safe abortion is there is because in every abortion uh, we should understand this uh, uh, all of us every abortion there is the death and there is going to be a death either of the child or the child of the mother and the mother so how is it safe so those are the things that are going to be introduced in what we call the, sec the comprehensive sexuality uh, education other things are uh, they're going to be taught about pleasure that being positive about young people's sexuality, understanding that sex should be enjoyable and not forced. You know, some of the things that they want to introduce in comprehensive sexuality education. But they also say uh, in, that, in that bill that some of the things that will be taught, you know, when you look at the, uh, the, what the adolescents should be taught, yeah? it's not only number four, it's somewhere also towards there, the end there. Yeah? Uh, the mentorship that is going to be uh, to be uh, to be given to ad to, ad to the adolescent, yeah, that is part uh, seven, reproductive reproductive health ad uh, for of adolescents, and they say uh, that it, that is article number thirty two and number two, adolescent friendly reproductive health services shall include age appropriate number one mentorship programs number two spiritual and moral guidance but who is going to offer this spiritual and moral guidance have they consulted us as a spiritual leaders to offer this spiritual and moral guidance then they talk about number c counseling on one abstinence consequences of unsafe abortion number three sexuality transmitted infections and hiv stroke aids number four substance and drug abuse and they want to really stress there on number one counseling on abstinence now when in this comprehensive sexuality education when they talk about pleasure that they're telling that the young person and talk about 10 and 18 that they have the right to enjoy their their sexuality all right their sexuality so when they they've been told how to use condoms what are they being told that they can use condom that means they can have sexual intercourse and therefore that's why you've been told about abstinence you only abstain to what you have a right to like during uh, the lenten season we are told to abstain from foods isn't it because we have a right to eat a married person can abstain from the conjugal act when they 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 agree the both of them because they have a right to the conjugal act but the young person between 10 and 18 do they have a right to have sexual intercourse so can they abstain? They cannot abstain because they don't have the right to have sexual intercourse. And therefore, for us as Christians, we should not be talking about abstinence. We should be talking about chastity, that these young people should remain pure. They should wait. And even if they are falling in love, it should be what we say, true love waits. And therefore, they should be taught even if they are taught about sexual intercourse they are taught about sexuality as part of it they are, they they thought about many things what does it mean to them they are told masturbation is okay watching pornography is okay provided you are enjoying it you know those are the things that are hidden in that age appropriate uh, education for our ado ado adolescent and therefore really i want to stress that our young people cannot abstain they uh, can only live a chaste life uh, in matters of human sexuality yeah and uh, then it, it talks about then reducing sex to something that is just uh, uh, to re reducing the other person to just uh, an, uh, uh, an object 
you know so if the young people can enjoy their sex other people then they're going to see other people just as instruments to be used and that will be very dangerous for our families and for our com and for our community all these all the all, all, all these things uh, you can we can of course read from uh, documents that our church has given like i said earlier on human evite um, on, on human life uh, encyclical by Pope Paul VI, written in 1968, and very powerful uh, encyclical, uh, Evangelium Vitae, the Gospel of Life, uh, given by Pope John Paul II, in 1995. Going back to talking about the IVF and surrogate motherhood, maybe can you expound on that a little bit, just for our people to know why um, it is morally wrong and why it's not accepted in the Catholic Church? Now, in the bill, they talk about uh, assisted reproduction assisted reproduction our church uh, in a document given by uh, our church in 19 uh, in, 19, in 1987 a document called donum vitae the giver of life this document uh, talks a lot about uh, uh, ab ab about uh, the assisted uh, uh, rep reproduction yeah? and uh, uh, this is a document that is called uh, given by the congregation for the doctrine of faith on the respect for human life in its origin on the dignity of procreation and replies certain questions of the day and some of the questions of the day are like this assisted reproduction and I said reproduction involves in vitro mm -hmm. fertilization or uh, surrogate uh, motherhood. Here they are putting at surrogate parenthood mm -hmm. because they are talking about uh, uh, parents uh, or commissioning parent or commissioning parents. You know, and maybe I shall talk about that in, in, in due course. So why would be would we as uh, Christians and the church uh, uh, be against in vitro fertilization or this assisted? Uh, reproduction. First of all, yes, when God created us, created us to be people who can procreate. But we procreate in the family. When a man and a woman get married, then now uh, they are able to procreate. They can get fruits of their of their marriage, and these are the, are the children. And from Psalm 28, we are saying that the children should be like vines around the table of the, uh, in the, in the, at, at home. You know, they, they bring joy. Yeah, the children bring joy. But we forget that children are a gift. A child is a gift. Unfortunately, here they say in this bill, as it said, number nine, one, this, every person has a right to assisted reproduction. What does that mean? It means that everybody has a right to beget a child. They forget that a child is a gift from God. Don't even say in our in our mother tongues or even Kiswahili. We don't say mtu alenda hospitali kuzaa alipatiwa mtoto, alipewa mtoto. Nyaraheirwa mwana. Isn't it? Those are the things that we we and uh, this is so we cannot talk about a, a family having a right to a child. Yes, things could happen that this couple is not able to get a child. Maybe the man or the woman is uh, infertile or impotent, and there are sometimes interventions that can be done, and they, they, they can be can be corrected, and the woman can conceive, or the man can be able to be assisted, and he they, they, the couple can can um, can uh, can conceive, yeah. But if they cannot, why would they want to take it as a, a right for them? Like I would say, I want to go to the market to the market today. And I want to buy uh, bread. I have a right to go and buy, so I go and buy. Uh, a child cannot be bought. IVF is something that we really uh, have to understand. That it is like me saying I have a right to a child for whatever costs. Yeah, by uh, or by hook or crook, I am going to get a child. A child. That is one. And then the second one is that it it uses also what we call. Um, things that go against the church because for a conception to happen outside the uterus then the female egg the ova and the male egg, uh, seed that is a sperm they have got to be 
fused in the laboratory. How do we get them into the laboratory? How do we get them into outside the body? For the man, then, it is through masturbation. And here they also talk about uh, sperm donation, you know, and sperm banks, etc. You know, and masturbation, we know, according to our Catholic faith, it is uh, something that is intrinsically evil. And therefore, when we talk about something intrinsically evil, we are saying that if something is intrinsically evil, then it cannot be done. It cannot be done. And therefore, the, that is something that the church goes, uh, looks at. Then for the woman, for one to be able to conceive, the woman releases an egg every month, you know, through ovulation. The ovary, this time one, 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 one over from one ovary, or sometimes two. But for to be able to have an in vitro fertilization, then we need more than one, more than two ovum. How do we get them? The woman has to be stimulated through use of drugs that she can have multiple ovulation. And therefore, these then are got, uh, got together and the conditions are put and then the fertilization happens in a, in a petri dish or in glass that is why call in vitro. In vitro means fertilization in glass. And therefore, that is one of the reasons why we say it is not right. And there's also a danger because we are going to use maybe only one embryo. Because when, when, the, when the, 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 the male seed and the female seed fuse, there's a child called a zygote or an embryo, and they only want one. What, do we happen to the, what happens to the others? Their rest are either going to be frozen or they're going to be destroyed. And therefore, the excess embryos are going to be killed or they're going to be uh, uh, frozen. And uh, that is also against the, the dignity of the human, the human life, isn't it? And then we can talk about donation. People are going to donate their own. Sometimes they don't know why they are donating. Some of them won't donate sperm because they've been told if you donate, you're going to be given so much money. All right? A girl be told if you donate your are, you are ovum, you are, you are over, you are going to be given this much money, not knowing the repercussions that are going uh, to, uh, to be there. And then also now this IVF also leads to the other part, which is the surrogate parenthood. That a person can be approached by a couple or by a person to carry a pregnancy for them. And this article, in article number 14, it talks about um, some that is very, very interesting there. Uh, this bill talks about uh, a commissioning parent or commissioning parents who are not able to give birth to a child and that condition is reversible. And therefore they're looking for a surrogate, uh, a surrogate uh, mother. Okay, a, sur a, surrogate, a surrogate mother. And when we talk about commissioning parents, that is a couple, isn't it? Or people, or partners, as they're saying. But when they talk about commissioning parent, what are they saying? That means that even a single person then can be allowed to have, to look for a surrogate mother. Then what are we saying? We are uh, having then families, and we're really trying to talk about families. A, family sh a child should grow in a family where they have both mother and, and father. And therefore, this is uh, something that uh, is really not good for us as Christians. So, assisted reproduction is hidden there, and they're saying it will be something good. It will be told, ah, this this couple has not had a child for a long time, and they have had, had a child through IVF, and we all clap. But what is involved uh, in it, and the dangers that are involved uh, thereof? Maybe now moving on to part five, where um, this bill talks about termination of pregnancy. And in Article 26, it's actually saying a pregnancy may be terminated by a trained health professional where, in the opinion of the trained health professional, there is need for emergency treatment. The pregnancy would endanger the life or health of the mother. Maybe can you um, elaborate on that? Can you discuss that further? Now, one of the things that is important about uh, life, it doesn't matter how a child is conceived. And many times people will talk about, uh, let us get rid of this child because one, maybe this girl, unfortunately, this pregnancy came about maybe through a defilement, an abortion, yeah? Or this person maybe has mental problems. Or sometimes even it's a couple who they're saying they have, uh, they have uh, gotten into trouble and then they want to get rid of the, ch of the child. Or they, 
and there are other underlying issues that could uh, happen. Or they wanted a boy and they go to ultrasound and they found it's a girl. And therefore, so when they say termination of pregnancy, if they don't, why don't they just say termination? What is the termination of pregnancy? Termination of pregnancy is simply abo abortion. And what is abortion? Abortion is killing. And therefore, when you talk about that you can kill, when in the opinion of a trained health professional, then we are making ourselves a human being, the ones who can arbitrate and say, this person needs to leave, this one does not need to leave. And therefore that becomes very, very uh, dangerous even for us. One time a doctor, I'll give a, a doctor was approached by a lady who said, I want to abort this child uh, because I am not able to uh, bring up two children. And this lady had another child who was barely one year old. And the doctor said, ah, okay, so you want to, you, you want to abort because you're only able to bring one child. Yes, doctor, please help me. The doctor said, very well, I'm going to help you. You only want one child, right? Yes. Let's do this. Let's kill this one child, one year old child. Then by the time you give birth, you only have one. No, 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 you know, this is a child. And then said, what about the one you are carrying? Is it not a child? Many times people want to, to imagine that what is in the womb is not a child. And they give it very many names, zygote, embryo, whatever it is, but it's a child. And therefore, when you talk about termination of a pregnancy, we are talking about killing a child. And therefore, in the opinion of a trained health professional, this health professional could be uh, talking about um, a child because maybe they have a deformity or they, they, the way they are being explained. It doesn't matter who the child is. Every child has a right to live and the dignity of human life begins from the moment of conception to the moment of natural natural death and that is why we have many people who are all the time talking about dignity of human human life but they don't speak about anything when people are killed so we talk about uh, uh, capital offenses where people have to be killed is it right for people to be killed no if it's right for people who are very old and sickly and because they cannot, they're not productive, we kill them through what we call mercy killing or euthanasia. If we can terminate a pregnancy, then it's very easy for us to kill children who are growing, to kill people who are old. Capital, capital punishment for us would be, would, be, would be okay. And what is important for us, as St. Paul, uh, St. John Paul II says in the encyclical, is to protect the dignity of human life from conception till natural death. Whatever happens after conception, if there's a child, that child got to live. But we say as, as Catholic and even as a, as a priest that if the mother has a problem and the doctor is treating the, the mother of a particular problem, let's say cancer, and then unfortunately the child dies, then the objective of the doctor was not to kill the baby it was to go and help cure the mother to try and save life because doctors take a hypocritical or hypocritic oath of protecting life and therefore every doctor no doctor should go and operate on a mother so they can kill the baby even if they're going to do any operation should be in a means of saving both because there is something they are going to cure. But in the eventuality that one dies, then it was unfor unforeseen. So that is why termination of pregnancy here from a trained health professional should not be. Remember the, the homily of um, uh, Bishop um, Anthony Mukofo the other Sunday. He was saying, what is the solution uh, to a pregnancy? It is not abortion. It is what? Give birth, isn't it? And even said three times, ninini ni kuza, eh? isn't it? So. The doctor should help the mother bring the child to term. Don't we have people who, women who have difficulties in, in, um, in their pregnancy? And they are put on, uh, on bed rest, sometimes even from their first trimester, mm -hmm. until they give birth. Why? Why would be in a hurry? Why would be in a hurry to terminate a pregnancy if something can be, can be done? And then we also question, well, who is this trained health professional? Uh, are they really competent? Why don't they say, at who is this trained health professional? Can it be a doctor who says, yeah, I'm going to try and save the baby and the mother and the mother? As we wonder, maybe we can um, just, you know, speak 
from your heart and passionately about about this bill, you know, without us discussing, having to discuss any one particular article. Just, just what is your feel and what is your plea to the Christians out there, especially to the parents? I think one of the things that after all we have said and we have looked at this, um, at this bill, speaking especially to parents, mother and father, remember that the child is a gift from God and there is no way that we can talk about a child being an object and therefore the child needs to be protected from when from when the child is conceived all right and you the husband and wife remember that even when we read from human evite that it is not every conjugal act that can lead to conception yet the conjugal act at every moment has got to be open to life and to the union of both husband and wife. And what we say is that every sexual act which should happen in a, a, in a marriage should be open uh, to life and open to, uh, to love. And should the condition not be right for, for, for life, then there is nothing wrong. But should they put anything, a barrier, a contraceptive, and even sometimes they use natural family planning, like uh, this bill is talking about, using natural family planning as a way of contraceptive, then that is not right. When you start like that, then all over, then other things will fall. You will be supporting this bill. You could be saying, ah, you don't want a child, and therefore let us use contraception. And when we get a child, let us then abort, you know. You know, if you, can, if you have done that, it will be very easy for you not to take care of your children. So, and especially women, please remember that you are the custodians of life. This baby grows in your womb for nine months, or sometimes less depending on the conditions of the mother. And therefore, there is a very, a very tight bond between the mother and the child. And those who have studied the, the life, the growth of the child, they know that during abortion, that the child will feel pain because they are being attacked. Why do you want to attack innocent life? Why do we want to bring a bill that is going to go against God's uh, command? Thou shall not kill. And that every life is a sacred life. And every life got to be protected. As a pro-lifer, I want to appeal that let us all join hands and say no to abortion, no to this bill that is hidden, hiding so many things. And we say that life, the human life, or let's say the sanctity of human life, got to be protected from conception. It doesn't matter how it is conceived, to the moment of natural death. And that is how you're going to stand firm and you're going to fight uh, for this uh, uh, life, my life and your, and your life. And if it is the will of God that a child has been born, then this child should be taken care of. Let us not be cheated that we can have children that are rights. A child is a gift, a gift from God. And if it's a gift from God, that is very, very, very uh, important. Yeah? And as I said, there are no safe abo abortions. Whether abortion is done in the back streets of, of, um, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a street, or in a hospital, it is all about abortion. Because every time a, a person dies when there's abortion, the child who dies is a person. And there are other things that may follow from abortion. Bot abortions, yes, uh, psychological traumas, dangers of importance of these people later on, yes. And therefore, I want to say, let us protect our families. Yesterday, the, president, the day before yesterday, the president said something that is very good, that weak families will produce weak communities and a weak country. This bill is going to weaken our families. And if our families are weakened, our country is going to be weakened. Let us protect our families and say no to the, this Reproductive Health Bill 2019 through prayer, through prayer and through our actions that we are going to be doing by telling the people what is needed. So since we want to, to, to ask God for intervention, as pro-lifers, the prayer that we pray is a prayer of Saint Michael. 
Saint Michael the Angel. Saint Michael the Archangel. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and the evil spirit that prowl about the world, sinking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We take this opportunity to thank um, Reverend Father Dr. Boniface Karaoke. That was very informative. That was um, very enlightening. And I really do hope, viewers, that you will take the time to actually go through this reproductive health bill for yourself, see what it has, know for yourself. It is also important for us Catholics to have the responsibility to educate ourselves, educate ourselves on the on the Catholic values, um, on the on the on the. Uh, things that are happening right now like with this reproductive health bill and one way of educating yourselves is to go and get those encyclicals that father has talked about once again i thank you for being with us this time for watching and always being um uh, you know being with us and and, and and religious in watching our programs this is the family forum and this is yours miriam wangi until next time thank you very much <music>